this is Gerd Leonhardt. Welcome to another edition of Meeting of the Minds. Today I have with me from Sydney, Australia, Ross Dawson, futurist, author, strategist and a good friend. So Ross, let's talk about the future of media and news and publishing and all, all the stuff that, that we look at every day. A key trend, I think, is uh, what, what is happening with print? I mean, clearly, if you see all the global curves, it's declined pretty much everywhere but Brazil. You know, Brazil is, is up if you look at the graphs. Uh, so Southern America in general is still up. So what's going to happen with the future of print? Do we still need print in the future or can we even afford to have print in the future? We will have print in pockets, and it's one of the, actually very interestingly. If you look at my newspaper extinction timeline, I put uh, India and China, or rural China, as to uh, past 2040. In fact, we've got some more recent data showing that, in fact, the trend in newspapers in India has moved very rapidly in the other direction. And so I think there's a real acceleration of more generally news going on paper formats, with a few exceptions. And I, the free newspapers still have their role. I mean, it's a far hard to see quite how long that will go. Another key one is in terms of highly regional, so suburban papers. These are things that can be supported by advertising. They don't have to be timely. So anything on paper is out of date. But if you're just looking at the community news, that's not so important. So I think a suburban or very local or very rural, particularly in developing uh, countries, we will see, see paper for a long time to come. But if we're looking at urbanized, developed uh, countries, news on paper is heading on the way out. Well, I mean, uh, news, of course, has always been funded by advertising. Uh, and advertising paid for the eyeballs. Now, clearly what's happening here is that people are shifting to digital means of consumption. And the advertisers have not really shifted a lot yet. They're starting to. Right? So when you think this will happen, for example, here in Europe, uh, where most of the budget is shifting to digital and, and uh, basically I think a lot of print, especially in Switzerland, a, a lot of print uh, magazines and newspapers had sort of an attention monopoly to where were they were the only ones getting so many eyeballs and that's rapidly ending. So how will advertising shift and when? That's, that's one of the big questions. It's, so lot, we get a lot of statistics showing, well, this is the proportion of people's attention and this is the proportion of people's advertising. They're very skewed, as in far too much spent on TV and newspapers compared to mobile or internet. But these aren't always the right measures. I think part of it is that advertising will be transcended. Advertising is always this push. There's other ways to be able to get spend money, potentially, but, but be able to get engagement rather than just trying to insert uh, message within a stream of things which of the information that you want. So I think that the, the marketing and advertising budgets will be allocated, reallocated massively. Uh, this is partly around the content creation within these domains. I think that broadcast you know, TV in particular is going to be massively challenged in a similar s scale to a say, newspaper on print. I guess, though I don't necessarily believe that mobile will become this place where all advertising is spent or where advertising really has an impact. I mean, do you see mobile as the, the place where advertising will go? Well, let's put it this way. I think that if we forget what advertising used to be, which is basically interruption and, and lying to a large degree, you know, saying things that don't, are not actually true, uh, in most cases that is really what happened. So the, the burger looks a lot better on the picture than it does there. Um, and a lot of the advertising that we used to have was useless and senseless, and we just couldn't get away from it. So now, because of digital empowerment of the consumer, uh, we are essentially at the point where we can cut out all the noise, I mean, that kind of noise. And so advertising is useless in that way if it's trying to interrupt us. It has to be meaningful. So therefore, I think on the mobile, we have yet to see the kind of creative context of how that is meaningful. For example, this is why Google bought Waze. Um, the idea of saying, I use the map, and as I'm driving, it says, you know what, you like, you like hamburgers, and here's a special today with a coupon here, you're 200 meters away. You know, and, and it tells me that because I, it knows my context. And that's not advertising, that's content. But it is advertising. Right? So that is the future where we're going, and most of the money will go in that direction, is my view. And most print cannot get anywhere close to this because it's fixed, it's a fixed medium. Yeah. So my view, the, uh, the biggest uh, chance for print is to converge with digital, for example, with augmented reality, with superimposed information, digital codes, uh, and make a nice interfaces and things that you can smell and touch like magazines and so on. But in general, my view is that um, print will be second, not first. So digital, digital will be first and print will be second. And now we still have print first and digital second. Right? 
uh, and that is a painful shift for publishers. And in many ways, I'd, I'd be interested in your take on this, but when I talk to my publishing clients, it, it uh, appears to me that in many ways they, are, they have a, a paradigm problem and that they come from a, from a background of a very high revenues and very high margins, that they somehow fell into their lap, you know, uh, because they had this huge attention monopoly. And now that's removed, they're angry. And they, and they want to go back to what, what it was. And, and that's not going to happen. Right? So then it's basically, it's gone. This idea of having this monopoly, the future is going to be over the top and direct and fragmented and individualized and customized. So that is a paradigm problem. And do you see it the same way? Or? I have consistently said that the future of the media industry, if we think about it in the broadest possible sense, is enormously positive. That, that, that is, in a way, the, almost the future of the entire economy as we shift to you know, the creation and dissemination of media and messages is where all value will lie almost. So what we have unfortunately seen is that the, those incumbent players who have been participating in this for a long time have not been uh, trying to hang on to what they've had rather than trying to embrace what is new. I, I agree with you on the value, <laughs> but you know you have to actually add value to be part of this. Well, that's right. Thing. Because you know, they're, they're discovering right now they never actually did add much value, but they're only fine out now. So in other words, because there was but no they, other way to reach the market, they had it. But now there's other ways they found out they never had in the first place. Though if you look at today in the landscape moving forward, they have better capabilities to take advantage of that than any new players, which don't have the scale, don't have the capital, don't have the relationships, don't have the access. So they are in enormously, the incumbent publishers are in a very strong position, If but the cost of adaption is enormously high. <laughs> and so we're seeing this divergence. There, right, there are yeah. some publishers that, is, that are managing that transition and many that are not. And we've already seen some go along the way. It's just, you know, Volkswagen and BMW and Audi are in a great position to uh, organize the world's public electric cars. They are. But do they believe they should do that? Well, ask them, right? Google is doing that. <laughs> so the publishers yes. are saying they can do it, but they don't perceive themselves as being the player that should be doing this. And, and this is this is the big problem. Huh? But, but this is the op well, there is obvious big opportunities here, and what it does look like is more that the new players, be they from other industries or just emerging from from out of nowhere, are the ones which are going to take more of this opportunity. Though it will take a long time because there's so much big slices, particularly the capital intensive movies industries, so capital intensive news on paper for, the, for whatever future it still has, very capital intensive broadcast also capital intensive. It's only when that starts to get fragmented into uh, online videos, into you know, online um, news in terms of uh, you know, all sorts of you know, podcasts, different mechanisms that new players are able to emerge and take that value. I think the only survivors here in media will be those that are outside of their silos. So you have these people who are thinking, oh, it's all about content, content is king. And da -da. You know, that's a silo. That's not untrue, but it's still a silo. Right? You have technology. Uh, you, have, uh, you have what's happening with data, the economy, you have advertising, you have devices. You're now in all of those silos. And the smart uh, media organizations like The Atlantic or The Economist or, or Bonnier or Publishing or others are realizing they are no longer in that silo of content. Right? They're in all of those pieces. And Apple and Amazon, for example, they're going from the tech silo into the content silo. And they're hopping from one silo to the others until they end all of them, like Amazon. Right? And, and so, for a publisher to realize that they have to think we're not a publisher anymore. And we are, we're a, a, a media organization, just like Google is a media now, it's not a search engine. So you're meeting in the middle. And, and, this, and this is the paradigm shift that if you, uh, if you stay in your silo, you'll be squashed. That, that's, I think that's the reality of the digital, what I call digital Darwinism. <laughs> because you, you make an easy target, a sitting duck. Yeah, I think my message to uh, People who create content would be to say, okay, let's think of this as a royal family, right? Content is king, context is the queen, uh, and then there's lots of uh, important uh, uh, people around this, but it's not just one thing. So you have to always add value to what you're doing. So the content is in the middle, but the reason that people will buy or pay is, as you showed in your own chart, right? It's all around this with interface, with context, with creating new products, with reason to buy. So I would say that you have to replace this idea of forcing to pay with the idea of uh, reason to pay. 
uh, and this is a crucial change of paradigm that they have to find enough value to actually for people to actually come and make the payment like the economist does or, or others you know create extra value like the audio track the economist has but my advice would be on to think of yourself as a, as a different beast it's the content is at the core and that's not going to get any any less important but to add the other pieces around it i think the the summary if i had to really distill my you know recommendation to media organizations is it's around experimentation because we don't know what the business models that are going to work are we're beginning to discover we we have some evidence so far but depending it is going to be unique for every organization based on where they currently stand the audience they have the country they're they're in the attitudes there so i think multiple experiments new business models new search for revenues being able to look you know very broadly at that scope so i think there's a lot of experimentation a lot of learning required and only those publishers that try many things and find out what works from that in their particular context will succeed i think there's one extra thing that's important is to go beyond the obvious which of course is our job as futurists but for example if you look what's happening with uh, recruiting and, and finding jobs on the internet so you have job sites like jobs.ch and so those sites here and they are the same in a directory and paper essentially classified right? and you can you can see that there and that has a good window but the real innovation is for example what twitter is doing which is putting hiring on twitter so you can fill out a job card and you can apply through twitter and the whole thing happens on Twitter. This is true innovation. This is beyond the obvious, because a social network is a really great place to be hired, like LinkedIn has created. So if I was a publisher, I would say, I have this website for jobs, that's cool, but really what I should be doing is using social media to find jobs and, and, and to, uh, to sift through people and using APIs to create value like those guys have done, going beyond the obvious. Uh, and, and this is the mission, I think, that is also takes some imagination of who you are to go beyond the obvious. You know, for example, radio, you know, if radio doesn't start going beyond the obvious, then they're dead. There's no reason for radio to exist, except for local news and sports, music, reports, podcasts, you know, in the car, and people have devices in the car now. So it's, you know, they, they have a big job ahead of themselves to find a new way to create value. Well, I look forward to, uh seeing a rich media landscape moving forward, and we'll see who the winners are. <laughs> okay, indeed. So this concludes today's episode of Meeting of the Minds. Thanks very much to Ross Dawson for being part of this today. If you want to know more about the show, you can go to meetingoftheminds.tv. We are also taking questions and inputs for the next show. Just use the Twitter hashtag Meeting of the Minds, and we'll be responding and trying to work your comments into our next show. Thanks very much for joining us.